President Muhammad Buhari has stocks. The minister's designates today as a presidential retreat began in Abuja, saying if they performed they, well, they would have set a legacy of lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. And Senator Ike Ikurumaru has returned to Nigeria after the ordeal in Germany, where he says he has forgiven his attackers. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Okimalia, Channels Television's global headquarters in Lagos. Well, let's begin with uh, uh, some of the stories we're uh, developing and we're following for you. After a terrible incident in Germany, former Deputy Senate President Ike Kuramadu has returned to Nigeria. He arrived at the Abuja International Airport earlier today and the lawmaker says he has forgiven his attackers. Is directed, is guided, because they were, uh, um, there was, um, I had a feeling that they wanted a place of, of alcohol or drugs, you know, so they don't represent the, the feelings of our people. So should be seeking justice for the government that is well, as I said, I've forgiven that I've moved on, so I've just moved on. So the government of Germany, they have whatever they want to do, they are free to do that. But the Nigerian embassy in Germany has requested a thorough investigation into the attack on the former Deputy Senate President Ike Kurumadu in Germany. The embassy says the perpetrators of the assault should be identified and swiftly brought to justice in accordance with the German law. Well, the German police authorities have been speaking on the incident of the assault on the former Deputy Senate President. Well, the Senator Ikure Madu at attack which happened in Nuremberg over the weekend. The police there described the incident as a demonstration by those who attacked the lawmaker and that no arrests were made in relation to the fracas. The police officer was speaking to a freelance journalist, Runa Meyer, in an exclusive for Channel's television. There is nothing, uh, uh, not very much uh, about this. Um, the secretary from Nigeria came and about 30 people uh, demonstrated against him and then he, um, uh, the police was called and they calmed the situation and the secretary or minister who he was uh, drove away with his car and... Uh, Everything was over. There is nothing. Uh, nothing happened, and nothing. Nobody. Nobody was arrested. Uh, so I know. Let's move on now, and let's check out some other political stories we're following for you. A meeting of the organizers of the revolution now in protest earlier today met a brick wall when at first the police sealed off the venue of a meeting where human rights lawyer Femi Falano, Nobel laureate Professor Walesha Inka and others were expected to speak on insecurity today. The group says it's especially concerned about kidnapping, armed robbery and banditry. A correspondent reports that police vans were seen at strategic locations around the venue where many of those attending were forced to stay outside. The venue was however eventually opened for their deliberations. The United Nations is assuring the government of Ikiti State of sustained partnership to address some basic issues of national and global concern. The UN team commends the Ikiti State government for efforts to check corruption and raise the banner of good governance as it expresses worry on the nagging issues of population explosion, poverty and inequality in the country. The governorship aspirant on the platform of the abundant Nigeria Renewal Party, ANRP in Kogi State, Mr. Emmanuel Orugun, has promised to diversify the economic base of the state using agriculture to increase its internally generated revenue, IGR, if elected. Speaking in Lokoja, the party secretariat, where he formally declared his intention to run for the governorship seat, Orogo maintained that the state, over dependence on federal allocation, was no longer sustainable. Since the way we've been moving, 
in the past is not working for us for over 20 years of our existence of our dear state. We need a, a change, a total renewal in our attitude and practice of politics. Now to our discussion of tonight. Some people will argue that it does look like the business of governance has effectively begun. Well, some people will argue that it will begin when the cabinet ministers uh, start work officially. But today, we shall be analyzing President Buhari's second term agenda and the plans for Nigerians on a day flagged off the presidential retreat for ministers designate. While highlighting the successes of the previous cabinet, the president challenged them to embrace teamwork in carrying out their assignment. And he did say that if all being done and said, they would have laid a legacy for lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty for the space of 10 years. Counting on you together with advisors and Nigerians willing and able to contribute to build open our roadmap of policies, programs, and projects that will lift the bulk of our people out of poverty and set them on the road to prosperity. Our administration's ATRs will have laid the ground for lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. The president did say a lot of things. Part of what he said was going back and talking about some of the achievements of the past administration. And he listed three areas where he think that the achievements were obvious. The president mentioned achievement one, two, and three. He did say first achievement that According to him, quote, we have rolled back the frontiers of terrorism. We are actively addressing all the challenges such as kidnappings, farmer herd violence, improving the safety of our roads, railways, air traffic and fire control capacities. Achievement two, according to the president, quote, we are steadily turning the economy around through investment in agriculture and manufacturing, shoring up of uh, our foreign reserves, curbing inflation, and improving the country's infrastructure. Achievement three, according to the president, quote, on corruption, we have recovered hundreds of billions of stolen assets and are actively pursuing control measures to tackle leakages in public resources. We will not let up uh, in fighting corruption. Let's take a look uh, forward. Let's look forward now and our conversation tonight, which a lot of Nigerians will be asking, how would the president achieve this? The president says, and I quote, our administration's eight years will have laid the grounds for lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. This outcome will fundamentally shift Nigeria's trajectory and place us among the world's great nations. Those are the words of President Buhari today at that event. How will this happen? We have the new ministers who are going to be getting to work. Let's get talking, everyone. I have Mr. Muda Yusuf, he's uh, an economist and a policy analyst, and he's here with us in the studio. He's the Director General of the FCC. Thank you so much, Mr. Yusuf, for coming on today. Thank you very much. What a day pleasure. and the expectations. I know uh, at some point you have discussed expectations, especially when the president got into office, how he needed to set up a cabinet. Now we have a cabinet. They are doing a retreat in the first place. What do you make of the retreat? A good idea? It's a good idea. It's a good idea so that the, all the members of the cabinet at least will be on board and they have clear ideas as to what direction the government needs to go. So I think it's a very good idea in my view. At least uh, it's an opportunity to also share ideas with the president, an op opportunity for some of the key players in government to also address them on what direction the, 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 the country should go. But more importantly, these are very challenging times, especially from the economic perspective. The global economy is on the truth of a recession, global recession. Similar to what happened in 2014 yes, yes, and yes. thereabout. Our reserve, foreign reserve, is seriously under, under pressure. 
oil price is already falling below the budget uh, benchmark of uh, $60 per barrel. So these are not the best of times. And situations like this require a lot of consultation and a lot of uh, inclusive process in, for, in policy formulation. Uh, so that is why I think that, I mean, the president is talking about taking 100 million people out of poverty over, over 10 years. It is impossible to do that without investors. Because when we talk about job creation, it is not the government that will create the jobs. As we speak, the government is already overstretched in terms of the number of employees that they have. Uh, many of them are struggling to pay salaries. And with the minimum wage that we're expecting any time soon, it will become even more difficult to create new jobs or to even retain those that are there. So we should be looking more in the direction of how to create an environment for investors to create the jobs. Mm. Unfortunately, what we have seen so far is that there is no sufficient consultation or collaboration uh, between those who are managing the economy and the, those in government so far. Is that but what I'm expecting okay. that with the new cabinet, mm -hmm. I think we can refocus that so that we bring the views of those in government together with those in the private sector together so that we can have an enriched policy formulation process. Uh, because so far, uh, we ha have not seen sufficient courtesy, have not seen sufficient respect for those who are investing in this economy and those who have invested in this economy. We should know that those who are investors, they are not investing just for themselves. We can argue that, okay, this is about profit. But in the process of chasing profit, there's a lot of social benefits to the society. Job creation is one of those benefits. Revenue uh, generation is one of those benefits. Social stability is one of those benefits. Poverty reduction is one of those benefits. So all of these things have to do, has a lot to do I, I, with I, the way we, I, I we manage investment. Mr. Yusuf, uh, apologies that yes. I'm butting in. Uh, a lot of Nigerians who are watching you now, they believe you because this is your area and yeah. you have advised and uh, formulated policy in this direction. Yeah. First and foremost, before we move forward, is there hope considering the team? Because when you have a problem and you have people who can fix the problem, then you, you begin to have some kind of hope. But the kind of caliber of people the president has put together, is there hope? Well, uh, it is too early to determine whether there is hope or not. Because sometimes, unless you try people out, unless you give people opportunity, you don't know what they can do. So my, my, my position is that we should try them out. They have already been uh, appointed by the president. That is what we have. We need to now begin to engage them. And we also need, because in the center of managing the economy, the central bank is also very key. The current unilateral approach of CBN to policy formulation. Now, we have a situation where the CBN has gone beyond even monetary policy into trade policy, into fiscal policy. So we need an environment where the CBN will consult, consult better with the key economic ministers. We are talking about the finance ministry, the trade and investment ministry, the Nigeria Investment Promotion Commission, the agriculture ministry, the budget office, I mean budget ministry of budget and planning. Because we need to have a holistic approach. Some kind of coordination. Coordination. Uh, uh, because Mr. for me, I'm, I'm not seeing that yet, yeah. and I'm worried. M Mr. Yusuf, take us to uh, a brief conversation to, that could lead us to a break. And you look at the focus of the president. It does look like what stands out from his speech today is how to take Nigerians out of poverty. That means there is a response to the global statistics that came out about how many Nigerians that went below the poverty line. That expectation, is it a reasonable one to expect in this kind of climate when you talk about the global economic issue? Of course, it is a reasonable one. It's a very noble one. But it is one thing to have an objective. It's another thing to have the right kind of strategy to achieve the objective. 
We have no quarrels with the, the objective that the government has set. But we have a lot of issues as to what is the strategy going forward to achieve this objective. And you cannot have a good strategy if you are not talking to those okay. who will make things happen. Mm. And these are the investors in the economy. L let me pause it for a moment, Mr. Yusuf. We'll take a moment on the program. A lot of Nigerians are expectant of the performance of the new cabinet members. And they will get working. And so we're trying to break down the policies and the priorities. Don't go anywhere. We'll talk more about these issues after this break, everyone. Join us again. It is a great privilege for you to be called upon to serve in this great offices of state, and you must grasp the chance with two hands and put in your best efforts, as Nigeria today needs top managers to handle our numerous challenges. There will be long hours, and you must be prepared to live laborious days if we are to serve our people optimally. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all aware of the looming demographic potential of our country. By average estimates, our population is close to 200 million people today. By 2050, the United Nations estimates put Nigeria aside globally behind only India and China, with a projected population of 411 million people. This is a frightening prospect, but only if we sit idly by and expect handouts from so-called developing partners. The solution to our problem lies with us. As ministers, I am counting on you together with advisors and Nigerians willing and able to contribute to build open our roadmap of policies, programs, and projects that will lift the bulk of our people out of poverty and set them on the road to prosperity. Our administration's ATRs will have laid the ground for lifting 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in 10 years. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. President Buhari has a cabinet, yes. The cabinet are undergoing retreat, yes. They will be sworn in on Wednesday, yes. The priorities have been set, yes. So we're discussing the focus and what is the need for Nigerians. Join the conversation, everyone. Mr. Muda Yusuf has been talking to us, breaking some of these priority areas down for us to understand. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Yusuf, for coming on Thank tonight. You very much. Uh, so if you look at it, the president said, in on you, those are his words, counting on those ministers designate. So if a lot of Nigerians are watching right now, which ministry do you think will shoulder, or which of the ministries, uh, those ones that will shoulder much of the responsibilities of these priority areas? Well, uh, first of all, let us also recognize that when you put somebody in a position, the competencies that the person has is a factor. The environment in which the person operates is also a very critical factor. So you could have somebody who is very good. If you find yourself in an environment that you cannot operate, there's no way you can deliver. And if the environment is right and the person is not competent, there's no way you can deliver. So it is important to have those two together. That is one. Talking about sector-specific issues, first, I'm worried about the kind of resources we are committing to importation of petroleum products. Uh, the 2018 data that we have puts the importation of PMS at about 3 trillion naira for 2018. That's a lot of pressure on our resources. Because one of the biggest problems we have today 
the issue of revenue. Because if you look at the total basket of the budget, if you look at our revenue, you look at our recurrent spending, you look at our capital, if you see a situation where the recurrent practically consumes the entire revenue of government. So financing government and financing development is very, very critical. It's a major problem there. It's a major problem. Look at And uh, the way to deal with this, first, is to see what kind of policies we put in place. And this will oscillate between the CBA and maybe the finance ministry, on what kind of policies we put in place to ensure that we give confidence to people to bring capital to but, this economy. But if we diversify, for example, whoever becomes the agriculture minister, would it matter in this case when we're looking at revenue? Well, it matters. But agriculture is not just a federal issue. Because in all of this, you also need to bring the states on board. Because if you are talking of agriculture, it is not the federal government that will provide fertilizers for all the, all, the, all the farmers across the country. It's not the federal government that will provide land for everybody. Mm. It's not the federal government that will provide uh, even farm equipment, tractors like that. So there's a limit to what the federal government can do. But in the policy space, that is true. In the infrastructure space, that is very critical. Mm. Because Just, in all of this, mm. infrastructure is also at the center of development. There's one area I would like you to look at. Yes. And that's perhaps some of the thinking of an average Nigerian. Let's uh, show our viewers uh, some of the expectations of an average Nigerian on this government, uh, generally on what they need, the issues of security, the issues of unity of this country, jobs, economic stabilization, food security, unity and regional cooperation, infrastructure development. Look at those areas, uh, me, me, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Yusuf, if you look at some of the figures that we have in terms of our GDP, in terms of unemployment rate, in terms of poverty rate, what are those things that are critical that needs to be done urgently to be able to meet some of the realities on the table? Infrastructure is number one. Because it is infrastructure that will lead to more investment. It is more investment that will lead, lead to more job creation. It is more employment that will lead to poverty reduction. It's the reduction in poverty that will lead to social stability. So you can see the nexus. All these things are interconnected. So if you invest properly in infrastructure, and you need a lot of funds to do that. That is why I was saying that it is important to inspire confidence of those who can support the administration with capital, whether from outside, the, outside this country or from within this country. Confidence of investors, it is key. And we need to also relate... But, but the figures of the ease of doing business... Sorry, apologies. Yes. Uh, the, the figures of the ease of doing business was, was a bright one the last four years. Some people will argue. Well, well it, it is, it, there was an improvement. But the ease of doing business situation, if you look at also some very critical issues... I mean, take the issue of port, for instance. How can any big investor who is in the real sector survive with the kind of port situation that we have? But well, a part is getting better. Well, those are the reports that we are getting. Marginally, the problems are still there. Because I'm, the, I'm just looking at the fact that probably there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is light, but what I'm emphasizing is that there should be sufficient collaboration, because the government alone doesn't have all the knowledge. We should relate with stakeholders in the economy. Perhaps, we should uh, get their ideas, mm, yeah. and we should also show some courtesy to those who have invested. In, the, in this environment. Right, rightly so. Some people have also argued that maybe our economy or our situation has not been properly assessed by uh, some of the indicators that are being used, for example, judging our economy or basing it on uh, the dollar uh, uh, gauge. Uh, that, look, that may not be fair enough because what is obtainable here may not be obtainable outside. But if you look, if you, if you, if you look critically, Mr. Uh, Yusuf, a lot of economic experts or development experts will tell you that your medium and small scale enterprises will tell the future of your, of the, of your economic growth. Uh, if you need to inspire it, what kind of creativity that can be used or can be put, injected into the, uh, that space that can make it thrive? Well, it comes back to the environment. It comes back to the environment. You look at your foreign exchange environment, the policy, how stable it is. You look at your tax environment, 
how stable and how investment friendly it is. You look at your trade policy, how supportive of investment is it? You look at your infrastructure environment, how, these are the t basic things that, that the SMEs also are looking for. And they're also looking for patronage. And our loans also to do, of course, because the, a lot of them will complain that they're, I mean, two digit uh, lo loan interest rates interest and all, rates all, those and all those are of also that. issues, but I must, you know, admit that the central bank has been doing quite a lot. Okay, it's better Trying now. to push the banks to at least make credit available. I think that some progress has been made. But the totality of the policy environment, the totality of the institutional environment needs to be improved upon. It's a lot of work that will be on the, on the shoulders and on the laps of these ministers, isn't it? A lot of work. A lot of work. But, but they are surmountable. Need, of course, they are surmountable. If only at least we can listen. If only we are also a bit more consultative. If only at least we bring people on board. And if only we get the right kind of feedback. Okay. Because feedback from policy is also very important. This is, so these are not maker? free advice that you're giving, <laughs> but I must sincerely thank you because a lot of Nigerians who are watching know what right steps need to be taken, yeah. especially coming from an expert as you, the Director General of the LCCI, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Always a pleasure having you talk on some of these issues and the way you personally talk about them. Yeah, thank you very, very much. Interesting. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for coming. Yeah. Well, that's our show for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm sure Kimale. Bye-bye.